The words that and which serve similar purposes in English speaking and writing, but depending on which word is used, the meaning of a sentence changes. Whether to use that or which depends on whether or not the information or clause being introduced is required to understand the sentence. If the information in the clause being introduced is required to understand the sentence, or more specifically, required to understand the preceding noun, the word that should be used to introduce the clause is the word that. This sort of clause is called a restrictive clause. Without the restrictive clause, the sentence and the preceding noun could not be fully and properly understood. Alternatively, if the information introduced by the clause is not required to understand the meaning of the sentence and the preceding noun, the word that should be used to introduce the clause is the word which. This sort of clause is called a non-restrictive clause. The word which introduces new information, but that information does not change the preceding noun or the context or meaning of the preceding information that was already communicated. Instead, it introduces new information, which, while related, could be left out without changing the core meaning of what is being communicated. Let's go over some example sentences. We'll start with three examples of the word that being used to communicate restrictive clauses. Example one, Bob's shoes that don't have any shoelaces were a gift from his brother. In this example, we understand that Bob has multiple pairs of shoes, so it's important to distinguish the ones without shoelaces from the others. The word that begins the process of distinguishing this pair of shoes from his other shoes with laces. Without it, we might assume that Bob only owns one pair of shoes, as in, Bob's shoes were a gift from his brother. Example two, monitors that are made for photo editing usually cost more money. In this example, we understand that not all monitors are made for photo editing. So, we use the word that to communicate the information identifying this smaller subset of monitors as the focus of our discussion. Example three, the car in front of my house that has a flat tire keeps getting ticketed by bylaw enforcement officers. In this example, we understand that there are many cars in front of the speaker's house. So the word that is used to identify the one with a flat tire as the car being frequently ticketed. Now, let's go over three examples of the word which being used to communicate non-restrictive clauses. As you will see in these examples, non-restrictive clauses add additional information, but unlike in the case of restrictive clauses, the writer or speaker is not changing the core meaning of what is otherwise being communicated. Example one, Bob's shoes, which are slip-ons, were a gift from his brother. Here, the information about Bob's shoes being slip-ons, or shoes without laces, is not necessary to understand the meaning of the sentence. In this example, Bob may only have one pair of shoes, and the extra information offered by the non-restrictive clause does not clarify that. Therefore, we separate the non-restrictive clause with commas and use the word which to introduce it. Example two. Spending on monitors, which are used for photo editing, makes up a large percentage of the company's annual expenditures on computer hardware. Once again, we don't need the information about the monitors being used for photo editing to understand the rest of the sentence. We could leave out the non-restrictive clause and still understand the intent of the speaker or writer. Spending on monitors makes up a large percentage of the company's annual expenditures on computer hardware. The information about the monitors being used for photo editing is simply additional information, 
which is unrelated to the other meaning being communicated. Example 3. The car, which had four brand new Michelin tires installed before the riots last summer, has been ticketed at least 20 times. In this example, the information about Michelin tires having been installed before the riots last summer does not provide any critical information about the car being ticketed. It is simply additional, related information that could have been omitted. Either way, we would know that the car has been ticketed at least 20 times. And including or excluding the information about the tires and the riots does not change the meaning or context of the information regarding the car being ticketed. Therefore, we use the word which. Changing the word used from that to which significantly changes the meaning of a sentence. In the first example we covered regarding Bob's shoes, changing the word that to which potentially implies Bob may only have one pair of shoes, rather than suggesting he has multiple pairs of shoes, which is what was implied when the word that was used instead. To summarize, in situations where someone wants to add critical identifying information to a sentence or restrict a clause to change the meaning of the preceding information or noun, they should use the word that. In situations where someone wants to add additional non-critical information that is not intended to restrict a clause, change the meaning of a preceding noun, or better identify someone or something, they should use the word which. Okay, congratulations, we are done. Unlike a lot of people, you know how to correctly differentiate between these words. You know how and when to use them, and now you'll notice when other people do not use them correctly. With that in mind, feel free to share this video with anyone you think needs a little help to do the same. Please also consider subscribing for more lessons. And once that's done, go on and enjoy the rest of today.